In this video, you will see five of the most epic sailboat drone crashes of all time. You will learn what not to do with one of these drones and what to do. And I'll also talk about what are the best drones to launch off a sailboat and what are some of the best practices with links to all the videos where they were originally recorded. The Slow Boat Sailing Podcast, episode 33 and episode 34. Guests sailing SV Delos and sailing doodles recently crashed their drones. And but first, if it bleeds, it leads. Riley from Sailing La Vagabond is showing what not to do when launching a drone from a sailboat. You can hold it up away from you. And the drone just tips over before it gets launched. Had he been holding it, he could have let go once it was ready to rise. A lot of folks think you can't crash a splash drone, but Delos shows you how. Slow Boat Sailing Podcast, episode 23, guest aboard Sailing Libra. Annie Dyke of Have Wind Will Travel shows the proper technique for releasing and catching a drone from the stern of a sailboat. Still, they've crashed their drone into the mast of the sailboat, too. Nobody flies more drones than Rick Moore, but even he has a bad day when his splash drone goes haywire. The thing about having a GPS drone, a drone that connects to GPS, is that it can hover. If it doesn't, it is not connected to GPS, it will just move all around. It'd be very hard for it just to stay stable. And so it's that hovering which makes it possible for someone to catch it in the air. Sailing Doodles lost control of the drone when Wi-Fi interference and an intermittent rotor led to it crashing into the forestay. That's great about the Phantom drone is it how big the landing gear are so you can hold it up away from you or catch it fairly easily. I recommend not getting the Mavic but getting the Phantom because it's got this hold. Now, can't get it wet, so you have to, if you're going to launch it off the boat, you have to have somebody catch it. Or you have to land it on the foredeck or something like that. But most people, their best shot of, of not splashing the drone is going to be having a catcher, someone who catches it as it hovers. So first time you launch the drone, don't launch it off the boat. Don't launch it out of the, in your house. Do it in an open field where you got plenty of room to learn the controls. Okay, so if you're gonna launch off your sailboat, first thing you wanna do is practice catching the drone with a partner on the land. Right. So you don't want to do the sailboat launch be the first time that you catch it because the boat's moving and the drone's moving and there's not much move to, room to maneuver on the boat. You know, the person has to just hang off of the edge. So you want to do the catching practice while you're on land, hopefully in a clear space with not many obstructions. Other things you can do to keep your drone from crashing is make sure you don't run down the batteries. So only fly it uh, until you get to 40% or 50%. Don't go all the way down to 20% or something like that. If you have plenty of battery life left on your drone, you will get multiple chances to bring it in. Great about the Phantom drone and also the, the Mavics and a lot of the other more expensive drones is that they are on gimbals. Their cameras are on gimbals that makes this image very stable. So if you don't have a stable image, uh, then the people that watch your video are going to get seasick. 
other thing that you want to look for in a drone is one that has GPS stabilization, right? And so the Phantoms and the Mavics will give you that uh, from DJI. Uh, I think the Splash drone will also give you that uh, for about just under $2,000, about $1,800. You can get a standard for about $500, Phantom 3 or a, a Mavic or a Phantom 4 for about a thousand dollars. You can get some cheaper camera drones, uh, but the features you're not going to have, uh, say on this little tiny hockey puck drone, is you're not going to have the GPS, and you're not going to have the gimbaled camera, and so the little cheaper drones are going to have, they're going to be hard to hold steady. Smaller drones also uh, are going to blow more in the wind, so a heavier drone is better. Without the gimbals, the cheaper drones are going to not have image stabilization, so your image is going to be kind of bad. Probably the camera is not going to be as good, so you know, with the Phantom 4s, you're going to get the 4K camera. With the Phantom 3, you get a 2.7K camera. I think the 2.7 looks awesome, uh, but you know, some people feel like they got to have the best and and brightest for the camera. It's all up to you, up to your budget. Uh, but I'd say 2.7 looks really good. Uh, this camera is less than a thousand. It doesn't look so hot. And I'll show you some photos that I took with this. Uh, it Small drones blow away in the wind. If they don't have the GPS. They're not going to hover well. So you have to be a really good pilot. The benefit of a cheaper drone, obviously, is you're going to if you crash it, you lose less. Feature that you want to look for is FPV. And so with FPV, uh, you you can there's an app that will show you the camera uh, from your smartphone. And that feature is actually fairly cheap right now. So this drone has FPV costs about forty dollars on Amazon uh, and that that's a feature you can get pretty cheaply and that's a feature you will want because then you can see what kind of shots you are getting some people say that this uh, SEMA drone is a good practice drone to learn to fly I don't know the experience is very different than a, a DJI uh, drone or any other drone that has GPS enabled for one thing, you don't have FPV with the SIMA drone, uh, and you also so FPV allows you to see the camera as it's flying, and you don't have GPS stabilization. And the GPS stabilization, very different experience than a drone that does not have that. The benefit is if you have kind of a bigger drone like this drone versus this tiny drone. Uh, you're gonna it's not gonna get blown around with the wind as much Still, you know, I mean you look at these two things. They're very different in size uh, And this weighs a lot more than this drone right here Here are some other tips you want to hold the drone so it is above eye level. You obviously don't want the blades to hit your eyes. And so the spotter, the person that's catching and releasing the drone should wear sunglasses just as extra protection. The best point of sale is probably to have the boat going slowly upwind and doing the catch and release from the stern. So the boat is moving away from the drone when you release and the wind is pushing the drone away from the boat. Also, when you're coming up, you come up more slowly as you're going upwind and the boat is moving away from you if you make a wrong move. Only fly on a day with less than 10 knots of wind. Determine signals so the pilot and the catcher can communicate. So for instance, the catcher nods when he or she has caught the drone and has it secured. If you have a Phantom, fly it in P mode, that is GPS mode. Don't fly it in ATTI mode. You want the GPS. You want to avoid big metal objects that will mess up with your GPS settings. 
So avoid ships, and you probably would prefer to do a sailboat flight off a fiberglass boat than a steel hulled boat. Fly the drone well off the water. Don't try to film the waves because the waves can hit you. If they splash the drone, then it can cause electrical problems. Don't fly it in the rain because most drones are not waterproof. So unless you have a splash drone, you never want to take a chance of getting it wet. So fly it high, uh, fly it several feet off the water. The higher the better because you can also fly over masts. Uh, so think about the mast heights of any sh sailboats around you, including the one you're filming. Remember, there's a lot of wind. It may be harder to get back to the boat if the boat is upwind from you. So you will need more than 50% battery life to get back to the boat. You cannot use the return to home feature on a drone because you launched the drone at a different place where the boat is now. So if you return to home, it will definitely splash. So it has to be manual controls for you to get the drone back on the boat safely. Flying a drone off a moving sailboat is probably one of the hardest things you can do with the drone. Don't do it if you can't afford to lose the drone. Fly safely. Subscribe so you can see our Round the World vlog series and other great sailing videos.